comes in legislature and, and we just want to uh, make sure that everybody here well and um and be able to be recognized still going to call for questions and um, we'll do that uh linda's not going to be with us her her um, mother-in-law passed away uh, i think mm. it was earlier earlier today so she won't be with us but we're thinking of them that's for sure and uh, difficult time always so all right why don't we call the meeting to order um let's start with Somebody's hurting us there on the mic. Can you hear that as well? Or is that just me hearing it? No, I heard it. All right. All right. I think it settled down. All right. So let's start with a <clears throat> reading of the minutes of the, of the proceedings of the previous committee unless waived. A motion to waive reading of the previous minutes. All right. Casey's first. Is there a second? I'll second. Brian. All right, we'll call Mr. Rowley. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Sorry, Debbie, do we need the roll right there? I'm unmuted. I'm muted. Uh, it's probably better if we call the roll for everything, just to be on the safe side for open meetings. All right, so for A, let's call the roll. Chairman Ernest. Legislator Jordan. Present. Are you voting yes for the motion to waive the reading? Yes, yes. Yes, okay. Williams? Yes. Ryan? May? Yes. Raleigh? Yes. All right. That's it then. So we'll move to uh, B, approval of the minutes of the proceedings of the previous committee. A motion to approve the minutes of the previous meeting. All right, Casey Jordan is first. Second. second. Sorry, is that Vernon? Yeah, second. All right, Vernon, second. Uh, could we call the roll? And Bertis. Legislators Gordon? Yes. Williams? Yes. Ryan? Yes. May? Yes. Raleigh? Yes. So Very well. Six, six eyes, one absent. Great. Thank you. All right. So let's move to C presentation of resolutions and local laws. We will start with. One transportation number one a bond resolution. Um, I believe it's Marty. Are you here with us? I am Tim. Thank you. There you are. Hello. You ready for me to start? Yes, sir. Go ahead. So uh, six seven weeks ago, we we managed to uh, put together a work plan with a skeleton crew of staff. Um, I, I, we did the best we could to get it for you folks as quickly as. And I appreciate your cooperation and patience with that. We are going to, we have approval from the executive to uh, borrow to support the work plan at the same level as 2019, which is an $8 million bond between roads and uh, bridges. So the bridge bond is 900,000 to support that. The paving bond is 7.1 million to support that. These bonds will absolutely support the work plan. They will allow us to start beginning the process of awarding work to our contractors who have um, bid and won the contracts for these. Once we get approval from Ways and Means today, we're comfortable going forward and getting uh, getting some of these contractors back to work. So this is what we're calling and, and our kind of DOT lexicon a recovery work plan this year because uh, this supports a lot of jobs. Um, we were able to get the paving lists over. I hope everyone had a chance to look at those. There was a small um, on the um, agenda that came over for, our, for Ways and Means on the uh, bond resolution amount. It should be 900, not 600. Um, 
So item A is the bond resolution for bridges. Item B is the bond resolution to support roads. And then the project lists, I know normally I'll sit and read them all. Um, Tim, if you want me to spare you guys that today, but you know, yeah, at, at a top line level, you know, our cash has already been reduced in our budget as part of the austerity that we've all been forced to operate for this year because of what's going on in the world. So it's about two million short of what we had planned. Um, we are anticipating chips will come in at the same level at least as last year. We're able to get more, and we are able to get paved New York. Other things that we haven't seen yet, state. We will come back to you later for uh, pro a proposal on, and where to spend that money. So then you go over to the bond issue at the bottom is eight million total supports the local share of federal aid projects, traffic systems management, cold mix, hot mix, and bridgeway, as well as some de minimis guide rail and other things that we have to replace. That all drives our federal and state aid for a work plan of uh, just shy of 20 and that we'll be able to get out on the street in the next couple of weeks. Very good. Uh, is that all, Marty? Don't want to cut you off. That's all on the on the bond resolutions. We do have some federal aid pay in the first instance resolutions, which are CD and E that that's just that we have to have to contract for this money with the state. But I'll I'll go through those separately when we're done with these. If that's okay. Uh, thank you, Mark. So we are on. Uh, Letters 1A and 1B. Are there questions? Chairman, Brian here. Yes, B. May. Um, hi, Marty. Uh, Marty, these bond amounts, are they uh, consistent with the plan going in or are we we're bonding for more? I just want to get that clear for the record. They're, they're less than we had budgeted and less than we had planned, but they're stable from last year. So, you know. Okay. We spent considerable time going back and forth, and I got to thank Steve Morgan uh, in front of you guys. Steve Morgan has been absolutely tremendous at helping me navigate this and get something accomplished this year. Um, so thank you, Steve, for all of your help and counsel. Uh, we would not have this ready to go today for Steve's personal effort, so I really appreciate that. Um, we're not going to be as aggressive as we had hoped to be with all of our infrastructure, but we're going to maintain. We're going to keep the ship steady this year, Brian. And we're going to put so, uh, Marty, thank you, Marty. So, so let me flip that around then. So we're bonding the same amount, but we're going to use less cash than planned, right? Is that where the, where we kind of pulled back on? Um, yes, we pulled back 2 million cash okay. and we also are bonding less than we had, we had planned, but, um, that was all going to be subject to you folks as well anyway. So we're, we're, we're trying to, um, navigate these troubled waters and keep the ship steady so we can keep things moving and get the economy going. It's, uh, it was nice to see the cash in there this year, but, um, but I totally get it. Yeah, I mean, and Brian, you know, if, if we had our way, everything would be cash every year, but that's just. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? You might have. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, Marty, it, it, maybe I missed it. So, are you saying that we're going to be using two million less in cash, or are we using two million more in cash? Less. Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, that makes sense. All right. Thanks. Other questions on one A, one B. Mr. Chairman. Again, just for the record, I want to ask Marty if he's aware of anything in terms of uh, federal or state um, uh, aid in, 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 uh, in the road work plan that um, he's aware of that, you know, would, uh, as a result of the pandemic, would, would uh, maybe modify this stuff. We have been following closely what's going on with the state budget and been through our associations with the New York State Association of County Highway Superintendents, uh, NISAC and others been watching what the state budget language is. The dollar amounts we're fairly comfortable with because that's borrowed money that the state borrows to, to pass through to us. So 
Um, we're comfortable with that. The changes that have been made at the state level are more in terms of process, their, their uh, budget development. We're comfortable that we're going to get our projects certified. We're going to be able to move things along. We're going to be kept whole on these program projects. What we're kind of hoping and really, really hanging our head on is that there's going to be some sort of federal infrastructure plan that could potentially be really helpful down the road later this fall or early next year. We'll see some big dollars getting spent locally, and, and we want to maintain our position to be ready to, to react and, and uh, spend that. So for purposes of what we expect from the state, we're comfortable. Remember the federal aid that's in our work plan is all approved off of a five-year federal plan. So that money's there. This is just our ability to draw it down and the resolutions that we have you pass for um, the individual projects are, are what enable us to contract for that money that's already been, been uh, sort of sequestered off by the, the transportation improvement program. All right, that's helpful, thank you very much. Questions 1A, 1B. All right, so then why don't we call the roll on 1A? Right? Tim, you're going to need a motion and a second. To... I'll, I'll, I'll move 1A. Pardon me. Thank you, B. May. I'm, I'm a, I guess I'm a little sleepy. Uh, motion be made by uh, first by B. May. Is there a second? Um, I'll second. Casey Jordan, second. Now, why don't we call the roll? For a 1A. Catherine? Chairman mm -hmm. Burris? Uh, yes. Legislator Jordan. Yes. Legislator Williams. Legislator Williams. Yes. Legislator Ryan. Yes. Legislator May. Yes. Yes. Six eyes, one absent. Very good. Why don't we go to 1B then? Uh, are there any other questions for 1B? If there's not, uh, do I have a motion? I'll move it. B May. B May is first. Is there a second? I'll second. Casey Jordan is a second. Uh, could we call a roll? Chairman Curtis. Yep. yep. Legislators Jordan. Yes. Williams. Yes. Ryan. Yes. May. Yes. Raleigh. Yes. Six eyes, one absent. Very good. Thank you. Let's go to uh, 1C then. Just sorry. Just had to unmute. There. Um, Man. You're a problem, though. It sounds awful. <laughs> you ready? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. 1C is a federal aid paying the first instance resolution for the design phase of a bear, the Bear Road project that we're going to be doing. Um, this is for design only. This is just to get the ability to draw down those federal design dollars. This probably won't be let until 22 or 23, but we, as you know, through the federal aid process, we have to have these, these every step of the way, we have to show the state that we have legislative approval to spend this federal money. So that's what this is. Um, where's the resolution here? So this will be in the town of Clay from Sandy Lane to Route 11. And the components in the village, because villages take care of sidewalks under their jurisdiction, North Syracuse actually does a nice job, um, will include sidewalks in the vicinity of the elementary school out there. All right. We'll be back later for the construction after group design.
questions on 1C? Turn the volume down. I have a quick one, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir, Mr. Knapp. Just a quick one, Marty. Um, this is going to be out a couple of years. Can we apply and get reimbursed for the 400,000 or do we have to wait for the, until the entire project is done? No, so the design money is included on the tip now, on the current tip. So this allows us to keep the project, you know, remember our projects take sometimes three, four, five years to get from exactly. to construction. This allows us to do the design phase now with real money right now that we can get reimbursed for right now. Perfect, thank you. So again, this is, we have a consultant do this work. This is more money back towards recovery that's gonna to go to an engineering firm that's gonna get them moving again. Good, other well, questions? We have, all right, we have a first, uh, Casey Jordan. Is there a... I'll second. Uh, Mr. Raleigh, I believe, uh, second. Uh, could we call the roll? Chairman Burtis? Yes. Legislators Jordan? Yes. Williams? Yes. Irvin? Or, excuse me, Ryan? Yes. May? Raleigh. Yes. Six eyes, one absent. Very good. Thank you. Let me vote. One D. All right. I just unmuted. There was a lot of feedback there. One D is the long awaited West Genesee Street from Wegmans to the Four Corners. We are in the final design phase with this now. Um, Legislator Ryan, this is near and dear to both of us because I know we spent some time at that Wegmans. This will go from Westland all the way up to 173 and then down Warner's Road to where Copper Top is now. This includes drainage, new box culvert at Westland, um, sidewalk on the north side of West Genesee Street, and along the east side of Warner's Road within the project. So we're, we're to keep this moving along. Any questions on 1D? I have a motion. Marty, yeah, this, uh, Mr. Chairman, I just have a, one quick question. Uh, Marty, what about has there been any other additional, I guess, subsequent conversations about um, we're in, I guess the bridge over the creek on on the town road? Yes. Yeah, I Chris, my door is open. We're willing to still listen and there's still time if the town of Gettys wants to get with us, if they're gonna if they're gonna allow that project at the corner of Westland and Genesee where the old Hess now Speedway is, um, we'd be happy to sit and talk with them. I've told the town engineer that at least three times, it's Greg Scromo. Um, you know, there's some, there's some local concern opposition to that project. We're gonna forge ahead with our design and with our project because we have to, to meet the federal deadlines and the state deadlines. But as always, um, if the town of Gaddis or the town of Camillus wants to see what we're doing, wants to talk with us and we can find a way to help them get that approved, we'd be happy to listen and be happy to try to work with them. Um, there's a proposal for those who don't know for a, a Chase Bank to replace a gas station that has sort of a open sea of, of access off of West Genesee. It's not really ideal from anyone's viewpoint that it looks like that and that it functions like that. It's very close to the intersection of West Genesee and Westland. We'd love to see that addressed, but the solution that the developer come up with for that includes a, a bridge over, not, uh, what is it? Brook. And there's some nine mile creek in position to a, a bridge over Gaddis Brook. So, you know, we're certainly not going to tell the town what to do, but we'd be happy to work with them if they if they want to come up and try to find a creative solution so they can do that bank project. But, that, but so the time, but we're under a deadline at this point to meet, to meet those state deadlines. So any conversation has to be had like now, right? Well, the sooner the better, you know. Um, 
the sooner the better. And they know what they generally know what we're doing. Um, you know, it's more of a um, there's a planning issue there. It's it's right on the borderline of Camillus and Gaddis. So there's some there's some intermunicipal discussions. Let's leave it at that. Um, you know, we're kind of we're not really involved in the planning. You know, our willingness to work with anyone who wants making it safer and and uh, more efficient in the transportation network in the town road and the county road there. Thank you, Marty. Appreciate that. Anything else for one D? I'll move it. Mr. Ryan. Mr. Ryan's first. A second. This is Lafayette. I have Jim Raleigh as making the motion, but I don't have a second. I believe it was Ryan first and Jim Raleigh second. Okay, sorry. Can we call the roll on 1D? Chairman Burtis? Uh, yes. Slater's Jordan? Yes. Yes. Ryan. Ryan. Yes. May. Yeah. Raleigh. Yes. Six eyes, one absent. Very good. Let's move on to one E then. This one this winter. One D is a one E. Uh, Excuse me. Uh, another, our final pay in the first instance resolution. This is for the Tully Farms Road Bridge over Onondaga Creek in a um, the booming metropolis of Lafayette, New York. The project has been designed. This is for a uh, 21 lotting, and um, we're ready to go with it. We will work with the school district down there to make sure we coordinate timelines and. Um, bus routes and things like that when the time comes. Marty, what's the, uh, Chairman, uh, it's me. What, what's the plan for uh, like rush hour traffic down there? <laughs> well, we, we'll move those four cars, <laughs> trucks, and they'll have to go around. <laughs> we will work out a, a, a traffic control plan that everyone can live with, with the town and the school district. Bridge will be open yeah. for the project, Dave. So somebody might have to wait 10 or 11 seconds to let somebody cross while they're doing one side, but um, I think we'll be all right. All right, appreciate it. <laughs> Anything else on 1E? Can I have a motion? Be May, I'll move it. Be May is a first. Is there a second? I'll second. Mr. Ryan's a second. Uh, could we call the roll? Chairman Burtis? Uh, yes. Legislators Jordan? Yes. Williams? Yes. Ryan? Yes. May? Yes. Raleigh? Yes. Six eyes, one absent. <laughs> Thank you, folks. Thank you, Mr. Vaughn. Good day. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Mr. Nick, you have this one. Hey, Mr. Hey, Chairman, Mr. I'll, uh, I'll hop in on this. Um, so 2A two, two and 2B, I think we do have Dan Kwasnowski on the line, possibly, if he needs to hop in. But, uh, you know, this is our annual Ag District uh, time of the year. 
Uh, a is for um, the entire county, so you can um, add properties to any ag district uh, at this time of the year. And so two way is for the areas that may ne not necessarily be an ag dis district two, which is the specific one that we're doing this year. Um, the difference is you can only remove properties uh, when that district is up for specifically up for renewal. So, but for two way, it's just calling for the public hearing for the uh, additions outside of district two and uh, uh, leader may I know you're on the primary protection board. If you want to throw anything in, I'll, I'll throw it to you. Uh, thanks chairman. I, uh, just a, another really good process this year. Um, I think the committee did a fantastic job vetting each of these requests, both for this and the next uh, uh, item. And, um, you know, and I'll say that that not every request made it in. So the committee is doing its work and um, and doing a great job along the way. So I think these are good recommendations for the Ag District. Thank you. Thank you. I'll just add really quick that these um, two items are for the public hearing, and then we'll be back next month for the actual ads and removals. Great. Thank you, Dan. Good morning. Any questions? 2A, 2B. All right. Could I have a motion? I'll move 2A. 2A. Is that B May? Yes, sir. The first. Is there a second? I'll second. 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 Uh, could we call the roll? Chairman Burtis? Yes. Legislators Jordan? Yes. Williams? Yes. May? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Raleigh? Six eyes, one absent. Very good. Let's move to two B. Two B. Is there a motion to B? I'll move it. B May. B May is the first. Is there a second? I'll second. I'll second. Oh. Sorry, who's the second? Who's that? Go ahead. I'll second. Uh, Vernon Williams. Very well. All right. Could we uh, call the roll, please? Chairman Burtis? Yes. Legislators Jordan? Yes. Williams? Yes. Ryan? Yes. May? Yes. Raleigh? Yes. Six eyes, one absent. Very good. Thank you. So if we could move on to uh, 3A now, emergency communications, I believe. Uh, Brian Donnelly is with us, I think. I'm here, Tim. How are you? Thank you. Good morning. Thanks. Go ahead. I have item 3A on behalf of E911. It's an agreement with New York State Parks uh, and the county to allow them to utilize some unutilized portions of the tower at the Pompey Radio Tower site. Uh, compensation for it will be $3,000 annually and will increase by 3% during the life of the agreement. Talk to the folks at 911. This is something they've done before with other entities. It does not have any impact on the county's utilization of the towers. Very good. Thank you, sir. Uh, any questions? How, how long is the agreement? Great question. I believe it's three years. Three years? Okay. All right. Thank you. Other questions for Mr. Donnelly? All right, seeing none, is there a motion? Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Rowley is the first. Is there a second? I'll second. Uh, Casey Jordan is a second. Uh, could we call the roll? Chairman Burtis? Yes. Legislators Jordan? Yes. Williams? Yes. Ryan? Yes. May? Yes. Raleigh? Yes. Six eyes, one absent. 
Thank you, Mr. Downley. So, number four, then we have four a. Onondaga County resource recovery agency. I believe Mr. Knapp is here for that. Yes, uh, thanks chairman. Um, yeah, so 4A is a, uh, simply a memorializing resolution urging New York state to, uh, uh, change the recycling rules and include, um, uh, basically wine, wine and liquor bottles as part of the 5 cent deposit bill under the current situation. Those go into the regular recycling stream and they're very 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 difficult to handle because nine times out of ten they break and uh, they have broken uh glass going through the waste stream and being handled by uh workers who are trying to sort out garbage and and uh different things like that and uh so it just makes handling it very difficult uh, Case you may remember, uh, Darth Glantz came over and talked to the EP committee about this a couple of months ago, and she asked me to uh, uh, sponsor this resolution, asking the New York State to add it to the returnables uh, portion. That way, this this material can be properly handled, just like glass um, uh, beer bottles and things like that. That they're uh, very good at handling. Obviously, there's no uh, financial impact to. Uh, to the county, but it would actually uh, give some revenue to the state. Great. Uh, questions? Yes. Mr. Yes. Yeah. yeah uh, I, I'd like to co sponsor this resolution. Um, this was presented or discussed at um, Environmental Protection. Um, I think we learned more than we ever wanted to learn about recycling. <laughs> um, but this, this is something I think that's that, um, from what I understand, would be really beneficial in terms of our you know, recycling efforts and to try to, as Chairman Nepp uh, mentioned, keeping these recyclables out of, um, you know, the the system. Because um, apparently, uh, these, you know, wine and, and liquor bottles can really be recycled almost endlessly. Um, but they end up in the, the normal stream of, of refuse um, or recycling uh, and end up kind of contaminating other aspects of our, of our recycling program um, and, and you know, decreases the efficacy of, of the recycling of our, our, our glass products. So I think this really would be uh, beneficial. I mean, some people I think kind of don't pay, you know, whatever it is, five cents for, for bottles at the time they purchase them. But, you get it back when you bring them back, so it's not really a big deal. Just more of an inconvenience sometimes, I guess. Um, but I do think this would be beneficial uh, to the county as a whole, and I, I wholly support it. And again, I'd like to list it as a co-sponsor on this. Very good. Thank you. Uh, others? This is Mary Kuhn. May I also co-sponsor that? I believe so. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Hi, and this is uh, Bill Kinney, Mr. Burtis. Yes. Uh, I would like to be a co-sponsor as well. Thank you. And I know it's not up to us, but I believe uh, Dareth was looking for more than a nickel deposit, just so everyone knows that. Okay, thank you. Uh, all right. I'd, I'd like to uh, jump on and also co-sponsor it, uh, trying to make my uh, wife in particular, who is the recycling queen in our house, if you only knew uh, <laughs> what I've, uh, how I've been trained, but it, I believe it is uh, excellent. And uh, so I would love to do that. Other questions? If not, could I have a motion for a? Casey Jordan's first. Is there a second? A second. Mr. Rowley? Mr. Ryan, that was Mr. Ryan. Sorry, Mr. Ryan. I also have, thank you. I also have that Peggy Chase would like to co sponsor. With that, could we call the roll? Legis or excuse me, Chairman Burgess. Uh, yes, thank you. Legislator Jordan. Yes. William. Yes. Ryan. Yes. 
May. Yes. Raleigh. Yes. Six eyes, one absent. Very good. Thank you. So now we move to 5A, County Legislator Standard Workday Reporting. Good morning, everyone. Um, this is the next round of the standard work. This is Debbie Maturo. This is the next round of the standard work game reporting resolution as required by the state. Uh, we've captured as many as we could this month um, per compliance, but we will have another one next month and probably the, the month following. Thank you, Debbie. Any questions? Comments? Mr. Chairman? How, how often does this have to be done? Is this once a year or a few years? So a three month record of activities is good for eight years, as long as it's a clear uh, depiction of your duties and responsibilities. If you had a job change, obviously you'd have to do a new one. Or if your jobs, your duties changed it significantly, you need to uh, submit a new ROA. The you can submit the form, the RS2419 form, which is good for every term. And the form just certifies that the ROA that you put in on the last entry is still sufficient. So if you put in a record of activities for this round, that is good for eight years, unless your duties change. And then next time around in your next term, you can submit the form certifying your, your previous entry. Okay, great. Thank you. That, that should cover my career. <laughs> <laughs> Others. <clears throat> Very good. Then could I have a motion? I'll move it. Mr. Jordan, I believe. Yes, uh, is there a second? I'll second. Uh, Vernon Williams is a second. Could we call the roll? Chairman Burks. Yes. Jordan. Yes. Williams. Yes. Ryan. Ryan. Yes. May. Yes. Raleigh. Yes. Six eyes, one answer. Thank you. Then if we could go to 6A, approving and directing the correction of errors on tax bills. Hi, this is Don Marber in the property tax department. Yes, hi Don, thank you. Hi. Uh, this is one corrected tax bill we have for a uh, property on a clay, which was incorrectly billed, overbilled significantly for County sewer, which is based on our water usage. So WEP has directed that we correct that tax bill. Yeah. Um, about 81,000 down to just under 12,000. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> well, the correct owner separately. So um, that money's not going away. They're just going to get it from the correct person. Got it. Okay. Great. Thank you. Uh, questions? Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. And again, I, I apologize. I, I had to answer a question quick, but I'm just curious, Don, do you know how this happened? I mean, 2019, the property had one unit, and then in 2020, the bill came out with 154 units. Just seems really strange. So, as you know, it's based on water usage, and WEP does their best to line up water meters with property uh, tax map numbers. And it's not a one-to-one -one relationship. I think they spend a lot of time trying to determine or or marry Aqua's data set to our property tax data set to figure out, you know, which tax parcels are actually using these. Sometimes that gets a little, a little tough. So we do occasionally have these corrections where they pop up, and put the charge on the wrong property. Okay, so so Mr. Chairman, I did just for the record, I want to express my concern with uh, with this process. You know, we we spend hundreds of millions of dollars in WEP, and uh, you know, um, I'm not confident that the way we assess units and the way we review how units um, 
you know, are allocated to uh, properties on, on a regular basis. I'm just not confident that, that that's done well. And I've asked the county controller to weigh in on this and maybe do an audit on it. Uh, I'll do it for the record again that I think you should do that. Um, but, you know, I think we should uh, have a little tighter system in terms of how we um, allocate sewer units to properties and make sure that they're done correctly. Two cents. Good. Thank you, Mr. Rowley. Uh, others? Very well. Could I have a motion then on 6A? First, I'll move it, Mr. Chairman. I'll second, be made here. I believe that was Mr. Rowley first. Be May was second. Uh, could we call the roll? Chairman Burtis. Yes. Legislators Jordan. Yes. Williams. Yes. Ryan. Yes. May. Yes. Raleigh. Yes. Six eyes, one answer. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Weber. Appreciate it. So now we move on to 7A, 7B. Uh, it's my intention today not to uh, take a vote on this, but to have a uh, discussion on it. Uh, it would be great if we could have uh, two bites at this, as we say. Um, we currently don't have the contract uh, with the, uh, with, from law and the city attorneys, uh, so it makes it difficult to, um, have a full conversation and then to have a full understanding to be in a place to be ready to uh, vote. But uh, would like to have a good conversation about it here today. And, uh, you know, we know we've known that this has been coming, uh, but it did uh, come quickly and there is, uh, my opinion, more work to be done. So um, is this yours, Mr. Knapp? Oh, um, uh, Tim, it's Brian Donnelly. I'll, I'll start off if that's okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. Thank you, Brian. No, no, no problem. Uh, and, uh, first off, my apologies. Unfortunately, uh, an individual in the city who was negotiating this had a, uh, uh, pretty significant family emergency they had to deal with last week. So our hope is to have it to you as soon as is humanly possible this week. Um, from a, from a, an overview perspective, uh, state legislature approved, uh, the steam school and the budget on the first states or the uh, city school district is working with the state board of education on reimbursement reimbursement level will be at $74 million. That's the project budget. What I can tell you is that it won't exceed $74 million from a project perspective. We will use that as our number and we will back into that through the design process. We won't let it go any higher than $74 million. There's no intention to come back to the legislature for any additional funding at any point during this process. Uh, as I said, the lease is not finalized, but we're very, very close. There are protections in the lease to ensure that the county is held harmless in this process uh, of note should be said as part of the legislation to also uh, establish a relationship, relationship with the school district and SUNY PLC, the adult opportunity for an adult component of this. Uh, the adult development is, is still being formalized at this point in time. Uh, my apologies, uh, but uh, uh, what it will be is there will be an adult component, but all of the adult learning will be handled at night. So, Steve Morgan has information about debt service uh, to go through, and I'm certainly happy to entertain any questions you have. Very good. Thank you, Brian. Uh, who would like to uh, begin? Uh, Mr. Chairman, it's Casey Jordan. Yes, sir. Um, Brian, I, I guess I have a couple questions. First of all, um, it, you're, wherever 7B refers to 
the city agreeing to repay the county in full for all debt service on the bonds. But what about, um, I, obviously this could initially be a sort of a lease arrangement. What about, um, you know, repairs, um, uh, you know, operating costs, things of that sort? Are, 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 is the city assuming all those costs as well? Yes, they are. Uh, the county's responsibility will be to bond for this and ultimately will be the lead in the construction. But after that point, the outfitting, any uh, repairs going forward during the term of the lease would fall to the city of Syracuse and the school district. But any knowledge is essentially are going to be picked up by the city. So the reimbursements for bond payments and any other costs or expenses will all be solely the responsibility of, of the city of Syracuse. Correct. Okay. Um, and I guess the other question I have is, is you know, obviously with all this coronavirus uh, situation um, and what's going on at the, at the state level, I guess what guarantees do, do we have or can we have um, that the, the state's not going to come back even though they say they're going to be reimbursing us 70 some odd million dollars, um, that they're not going to say, well, geez, I know we said this, but you know, geez, you know what? We have a you know six billion dollar shortfall in our budget, so we're going to, have to cut back on projects, and you're not going to be getting you know what you would normally get from from the state towards these costs. Uh, a couple of things I would take as a positive is when this was approved in the budget was certainly during the coronavirus pandemic, uh, so they were aware of the financial situation that they're facing. They still approved this and have made it a priority in the state budget. Uh, the other thing is, is that the, 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 the lease payments and the payments to the school district will not begin until they take occupancy, which we anticipate would be 24 months. So at that point in time, being that this would be bonded money from the state through the state education department, we're confident that there won't be any impact from Corona at that point. Well, right. But I mean, whether it's coronavirus or, or you know, some other financial difficulty or impact, I guess what is there any way that we can be guaranteed that future legis and I, I think I kind of know the answer to this, but any way that we can guarantee that future legislatures or that, you know, the, the um, governor or future governors at some point in time, the future will, you know, might kind of say, well, yeah, I know that we said we would, you know, reimburse you for this, but times are tough and we, you know, we're not going to be able to give you what we would normally give you um, this year or the next few years or whatever. Is there any way to guarantee that there's no way that the state can um, cut back or rescind or or affect what would otherwise be the normal payment uh, you know, towards their share of the cost of this? Casey, I can't give you an absolute guarantee. Uh, you know, we, we go out on, on faith, uh, certainly on our federal aid construction projects for highways from the federal government. And from the state, um, this is capital funds from New York State. So I'd say that it is more secure than potential operating uh, budget cutbacks. Um, I've heard nothing from the state that there's any concerns on this not moving ahead. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yep. Other questions for Mr. Donnelly? Mr. Chairman, just duty to some. Oh, wait, let's go to uh, Mr. Rowley. Can you hear uh, so, me? going to Mr. Rowley. Okay. So, uh, Brian, the, the the term of the lease. What's what is that going to be? Do we know? Uh, it's my understanding, Jim, that the um, state will reimburse the school district over 15 years. Um, but I'm, I'm not 100% positive on that. It could be a term. Uh, whatever the term of reimbursement is, it most likely be the term of the lease and the term of our debt service. But so, so do we, are we going to own the building or is the school district going to own the building? We will own the building uh, for the purposes of constructing it and through the term of the lease. At the end of the lease, it will be returned to the city and the school district. Okay. And then you said uh, within the lease, it's going to spell out that the operating costs are uh, on the um, 
on the school district to pay. Uh, would that include insurance costs on the building? I believe so, but I'm going to defer to Bob Durr on that. Is he on the line or? He was on the, he was on the line. Uh, so uh, let, let me check and I'll get back to you on. But I believe insurance is the responsibility of the tenant being the Syracuse City School District. Okay. We're going to uh, we're going to back into design uh, for seventy four million on this project, and it's not going to go over that. We we got an architect's um, document in our packet that was entitled conceptual budget analysis. Now, I'm looking at all the things, and I'm not an architect. I'm not um, an expert in that regard. I know a little bit about capital project at the school district level. But what was the uh, you know, detailed in that um, project seemed like a lot more than $74 million. Is there, are there any numbers to that conceptual budget analysis document that we could see? Because my feeling is what they want to do is going to cost a lot more than what we've agreed to bond for. So, uh, yes, there are, Jim, and I'll see about getting uh, a summary over to you for uh, what we had asked is we asked Huber Brewer on one of our term contracts this past summer to uh, review from a conceptual standpoint of the potential cost for the project. Uh, certainly we wanted to be in a situation to make sure that the state match that. Uh, and they, they looked at it from, from the standpoint of, uh, you know, what's gonna be necessary to basically make this a modern school and as much as can in a historic building, address ADA concerns, address roofing, mechanical, electrical, plumbing concerns. And, uh, you know, they came up with a figure with inflation that's just shy of $74 million. So we're, we're, we're confident, but at the end of the day, $74 million is the number. Uh, if for any reason during the design process, it started creeping beyond that, we would work with the school district to trim back what we're doing in the building to make sure that it meets the budget. Okay. And then, so my my final question or questions would be on um, cash flow and debt service, um, and, and uh, I'm sure Steve would want to weigh in on this. Uh, first question is, I'm sure we're going to issue bans as this project is, gets underway. Will will the, will the school district be responsible for ban interest as well? Yeah, if we do issue bans, which this is by the way, uh, if we do issue bans. Uh, they would be responsible for all costs associated with financing the project. Okay. And then, do we know? Um, the Jordan Law offices. Can I take? Do Do we know if um, typically on a school district side we have uh, financial advisors involved that will uh, project cash flow, project debt service, um, you know, uh, project what your state aid is going to be on this. Have we gotten any of those um, kind of types of calculations from the school district in terms of what their state aid is going to be and how it might flow? Uh, we had preliminary uh, estimations and calculations from the from Susan Slack, uh, the CFO for the school district. Um, mm -hmm. I know they've uh, started working with their advisors to um, solidify those numbers, um, but the uh, the initial estimation again from the reimbursement perspective is with the double mca reimbursement um you're looking at uh 70 uh, just shy of 74 million but those those resources process jim will be fully um in, will be fully engaging um with the school district uh since they have the experience and knowledge in this area so we will lean heavily with our partners um to ensure that um you know, this project moves forward in the mold and the, the process that's been out there for years. Right, okay. All right, I, and again, I, I'm just, I just, and I think that the agreement will speak to it. I just wanna make sure that we're covered. You know, my final comment is, and again, I think uh, Leader Mays brought this up in, in other areas before, but uh, resolution B includes both the, the lease agreement and the seeker resolution. You know, I, I agree with Leader May's comments previously that those type of things should be separated in the resolutions. It'd be nice to have that separated. And uh, again, going forward with there's other projects, I'd like to see those separated as well. 
Um, that's all my. That's all I have for right now, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Rowley. Uh, other comments or questions? Now I'm going to limit it to the uh, committee members. Ways and means. Other questions or comments from the members? All right. Uh, I would say that we should uh, com continue to uh, have discussion about it, look at all the information that's in our packet. We have the seeker, we have the, uh, we have the design, we have a lot of information there. There's a lot to, to look at, a lot to consider. Appreciate the conversations I've had with uh, many members and the work that's uh, being done there. I'm hopeful that we can get the, uh, the contract uh, soon and that we'll be able to uh, look at that and have some conversation about that. Other, other questions, comments? All right, I guess we'll leave it there then. Um, so that is 7A, 7B, as I said, I do not plan to take a vote today. Just wanted to introduce it and have some uh, conversation. Is there any other business pertaining to what was on the agenda today? Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. You said you wanted to take a couple of bites at the apple. Will this be going to facilities committee or or to the floor? Do you know? I I do not know. I haven't had uh, that type of conversation um, about it. But um, maybe somebody <laughs> else can speak to that. Yeah, we'll. Uh, this is uh, uh, Chairman. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll go wait and see. Uh, given the personal situation of the of the city attorney, um, we're we'll, uh, go wait and see what what the status of that is. If we uh, if we ever get that in soon, then we'll 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 see what it has to say and what questions it brings up. Um, obviously, if we don't have it, we can't we can't vote on it. So um, so more more to follow on that one. Okay, Chairman Knapp, I, I would just you know. I would uh, I, I would you know encourage it to go to facilities committee once the agreement comes out so that we do have an opportunity maybe to ask some more questions on the agreement. I'd hate to go to to the floor with the you know even if we get the agreement before uh, before session without um, having the opportunity to get some questions answered. Okay. Nope. Appreciate your thoughts, Chairman Burtis. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, thank you. I was having technical difficulties, so I apologize. I was trying to get a, a couple of comments and, and clarification. Um, uh, Mr. Donnelly's um, comments were not coming through very clearly. Yes. So I just wanted to just clarify a couple of things that I thought I heard, but yes. um, Brian was breaking up a little bit. Yep. So uh, if I could just follow uh, Legislator Jordan's line of questioning. Um, Brian, did did you say that the city or the school district will be uh, responsible for the maintenance and repairs of the facility? I think you said the school well, district, but ultimately it would fall to the school district. But as they're a financially dependent school district, they're backed by the city of Syracuse. Understood. Thank you. Okay. And then I think you said um, when you were talking about, you know, confidence over the state financial situation, um, you were confident Corona will not be an issue in 24 months. So was that, I mean, what's the, what's the basis of that? Is that, is, and, and is there something um, in, in the contract that, that gives us any kind of assurance or protection along those lines? I know we'll see the contract eventually, but um, I think uh, Casey was on a good track there and I just wanted to make sure we're, um, being thorough with that questioning. Well, let, let me clarify. I don't have a crystal ball. I'm very much hopeful, uh, as all of us are, that uh, far out that we're not in a situation where this is still a, a, a daily impact. Um, my point was is that the, the reimbursements from New York State will not start flowing until uh, they take occupancy of the building, the school district. That's anticipated to be at 24 months. 
it's certainly my hope within 24 months that this is not an issue uh, for uh, uh, the state uh, from a financial perspective. From a comfort level, because this is not uh, going to come out of state operating, it would be bonded cash or bonded uh, funds. Um, I'm, I'm more comfortable from that perspective as opposed to if it were included in operational funds for the 2020 2021 state budget. Thank you. And then uh, lastly, uh, I just want to thank uh, Legislator Raleigh for, for bringing it up. I was intending to do the same, and I just want to echo the comments that I think we should. I think the term is bifurcate uh, item B and pull the lease uh, out and separate from the uh, seeker determinations. Um, and that's it, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. All right. I thought I heard Judy Tesson wanting to speak as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. We were... Debbie, I think we were going to hold it to Ways and Means members. Is that correct, or am I incorrect there? Uh, Chairman Burtis, that's that's your call. Tim, I did have one follow-up question. This is Casey. Uh, Brian, so you said that that the reimbursement from the state won't start until the school district takes possession. Um, but what about our bonding payments? When will they start? To, you know, obviously, the school is supposed to be, you know, carrying the entire cost for the bonding. But if if they don't take possession until you know it's all it, basically 24 months, when will our bond payments begin? And if it's prior to the 24 months, how is this the city going to be, be reimbursing us for whatever payments are made in the interim? So from, from a cash flow perspective, um, I, I couldn't say for sure exactly when we're going to bond. I'd leave that to, to Steve Morgan based on what our existing cash flow is. Uh, if we needed short-term financing uh, during the project itself, uh, for any reason, if we decided to hold off and do bans rather than bonds until the end, uh, the financing costs would be the responsibility of the school district. But I assume they're not going to make any payments to us until they take possessions. They're going to be paying that after the fact. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So if we make payments, say within 18 months, um, but they don't take possession for 24 months, and in the meantime we've made four or five, you know, bond payments or whatever type of financing payments, are they then going to be sort of retroactively reimbursing us for the payments that we've made prior to them taking possession? That's how I would envision it, Casey, that uh, the, the time span in between when we bond and we have our first debt service payment and when they take occupancy and the school district reimburses them. Uh, however, there's going to be a lease payment in there, so they're not going to start that lease payment until they take occupancy. So there could be a period in there in between when we finance versus when occupancy happens. Yeah, and just to jump in, this is Steve Morgan. Um, we we will, uh, you know, we'll look to borrow money. You know, a lot of it's going to depend on Casey, the you know, getting this approval, and then the, the the city school district and the city updating the construction plan. So, based on what I'm seeing, I I, I don't, you know, I I don't think we'd be looking to borrow money until next year, which then would push the first payment, which would be interest only, into the following year. So depending on how the work program and the construction timeline lines up, um, will dictate on when we, if, if we skip the ban process and go right to just issuing um, bonds. Um, if we issue bonds uh, this year, obviously an interest payment will become due before they take occupancy and we'll have to fund that until occupancy is taken. Well, so, but, so how, how then would reimbursement occur if the reimbursement is essentially coming from the lease payments, but they haven't taken possession yet? How would there be a, a, a retroactive reimbursement? What would be the vehicle for doing that if it wouldn't be through, through the lease payments? The lease payments going to equal the debt service of the debt we issue. So over the 15 year term of the lease, the payments that will ensue over that 15 years will will incur, will entirely cover the debt issuance costs that the county incurs. They're not going to lie. The timings here isn't going to line up exactly. 
Um, the agreement will ensure that uh, the, the lease payments over the 15 year period will um, include the entirety of the costs of the county. So I guess maybe yeah. just can we capsulate that. So if let's just say the debt service on over the, the 15 year period, the total cost, including interest would be $100 million, then the lease payments for the period of 15 years would be that $100 million divided by whatever number of months, um, you know, 15 years and some amount, amounting to. Um, so that's essentially how it would work out? Correct. Okay. But there's gonna be a timing issue, Casey. So, I mean, we, we may very well have to pay a little bit on the debt service before we actually start getting the lease payments in. But ultimately that 15 year lease will encompass the total costs to the county, whether it's 90 million or whatever it is with the interest rate we end up getting. Right, right. Right. I think uh, I still will to uh, questions or comments from the members of Ways and Means. If there's other uh, questions or comments, feel free to email me, email the correct person in the administration to get your questions answered. Appreciate everybody being here. And appreciate the good uh, questions and comments, the good time we had together. Chairman Burtis, I just have one quick question. Yes, sir. Uh, can I just a question regarding the possible specifics on the construction phase that I hear? Did you, I think somebody said 24 months. Is that accurate? Is that close and from, from start to finish? I think, Brian, did you? Yeah, it's that's specific to when the city was going to take ownership or whatever. So what was what was the construction phase possibly? Uh, it, it's anticipated it would be approximately 24 months, including a design phase. 20, 24 months inclusive of the de design. Okay. That's all I have. Thank you. You're welcome. Anything else before we adjourn? If there's none, could I have a motion? Um, move to adjourn. Uh, Casey George. Second. First, and does that be May 2nd? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, could we call the roll, please? Chairman Burtis? Yes. Legislators Jordan? Yes. Williams? Yes. Ryan? Yes. May? Yes. Raleigh? Yes. Six eyes, one absent. Then we're adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Thanks so much. Thank you. Have a good day. Good week. You too. Thanks, Dan.